There we go. That's weird. OBS just had like a freaking panic attack. I hit the button, it started, and then it just automatically shut itself off. I'm watching it now to make sure it doesn't do that again, but I think we're good now. All right, Friday Night Fights. Let me go ahead and set the prediction up, put that up for uh, about 15 minutes, and hopefully we'll get things started sooner or later. Let's go ahead. It is going to be Blue 4 attacking, Green 4 defending. And, yeah, F it. You know, we'll set it for 20 minutes because they're going to have time to run in anyhow. So uh, that'll give people plenty of time to actually put the uh, bets in. Regardless how you're all doing, we will here. We're going to be trying to cover two rounds at a minimum today. Maybe the third if we can uh, get the time set for it. But this first one's going to be on Kundo's River called Ruined Opportunities. Blue 4 on the offensive side. Green 4 on the defensive side. It's going to be a double sector control. And the AO is actually, what is this, four kilometers by four? Technically three, though, because this is kind of a border area here with a random border. I don't really see Blue 4 utilizing the bridges to then do a river crossing when it's urban. I mean, the reality of these AOs is there's other routes to do things. I mean, let's see, this AO, you just have to come into here, and then that'll give you access to both AOs through those streets, but... I mean, if Blue 4 wanted to be cheeky, they could theoretically go around and then come in through that forested area into there. Oh, wow, fuck, we got started immediately. Excellent. Yeah, and then the other AO, I mean, just tracking lines, you just go up to here, this town, and then you utilize these crossing points here. You can send another team up and just go right into the AO. Green 4 numbers today, I think, are only about 60 or so. Let me quickly fact check that. Yeah, we're sitting at about 65, so this is going to be under Staff Platoon versus under Staff Platoon. Three squads with a command element, which means there's going to be a lot of control and coordination from the commander side. But in reality, I think Green 4 is just going to do an all-eggs-in-one-basket defense here. And it's going to be up to Blue 4 to properly assault it. You still have kill zones around both sectors, though. You do have a really nice vector into this AO, though, through the little riverbed here, so that's going to be tough to manage uh, because it means Blue 4 is going to have to lock it down with something locally, but that's going to, excuse me, Green 4 is uh, because this area is literally just these ruined buildings right here with a little bit of walls, and yeah, that is not a good AO. Wow. I don't see them holding that one at all. Let's see the other one from the uh, ground perspective here. This one, you've got much better control of the open fields. Yeah, you still have some forested areas to go up with, but I mean, the AO is literally this little border of buildings. Wow. You do have some decent overwatch points for control for this one, though. You got that second story building. You got this second story building over here. You got another one over here. You got another one over here, even. So I could see Green 4 going out and forming a defensive perimeter with these second story buildings around it. This other one, though, it doesn't really have that. You got some single buildings around. And I'll be honest, this one, you do have a bit more open field control. It's just you got to find something to deal with this round over uh, that area over there and the riverbeds. But I'm going to be honest, I'm going to actually retract my previous statement. This AO is good if you want to hold a true inner security perimeter and cover these open areas here. This one, if you had a bit more of numbers, I could see you just taking the second story buildings and locking things down, but that's really going to spread their perimeter thin. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see them hold this one just so they can lock down those open areas there. Regardless, Blue 4 looks like they're going to be starting on the northern side. They could still switch, but we'll just have to see how they funnel in. But it's going to be about, I want to say, 10 minutes of walking into the AO. I kind of wish they got transport vehicles for this one. Uh, that way it could kind of speed them along because I always like to see the FNF rounds go a little more quick. But regardless, let's go ahead and actually look at the mission details and break things down. So it is just sector control with FNF. Uh, the attackers, in this case Blue 4, need to take over both sectors. How they do that is they have a number advantage and they hold that number advantage for 90 seconds in the sector compared to the defenders. And once the sector is captured, it can no longer be recaptured. Uh, the defenders have to hold at least one of the sectors by the end of the time limit, which is 50 minutes. This is at 62 because we have 15 minutes of a safe start timer uh, and then 50 minutes of the round itself. Those 15 minutes are used for uh, planning things out. But regardless, uh, FNF rules, if you completely wipe your opponent regardless of the objectives, you win by default.
<laughs> I love that rule. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and look at our briefing here. So render distance is going to be 800 meters. So that tower might be a really great place to put some marksmen if Green 4 decides to hold this objective. Notes, Green 4 cannot see Blue 4 safe zones. Oh, that's even worse. They don't know where Blue 4 is going to be. Background, government forces are trying to dislodge a non friendly armed group. I'm assuming that means friendly. Armed group from the main region highway. Area of operations, control over an MSR. A driver bed circles north and uh, west of the road. Multiple tree lines and enterable houses dot the area. Mission rules, none specific. Everything's valid. All right. Blue 4, the attackers are going to be the Dutch army. Interesting. So we've got, uh, what are those? M16A2s? Those are either A2s or A3s, but either way, we got some uh, 203 systems underneath. Uh, the Marksman Rifle is going to be the Scar H with the Lawn Barrel. Interesting. Mini-Me's for their light machine gunners, and AT4s for single-shot disposable AT light anti-tank weaponry. So, no medium machine guns, though, so it's just going to be all saws. But I'm going to be honest, that's not a bad choice. Loadouts for Green 4 are going to be Insurgent Kits, so these are AK-74s, AK-74s with GP-25s, M76s for the Marksman Rifle, uh, PKMs for the Auto Riflemen, Medium Machine Gunners, and Delta get the FN Mag, that's funny, and then RPG-7s for their light anti-tank. Okay. Otherwise, looking at the roster, oh, God. <laughs> My god, and who is the commander to lead Blue 4 through an open field assault? It is no other than my man Pierce, the king of the open field charge. Yes, the perfect pairing for this AO. Oh, he's got Zixmi as his 2IC. This is gold. Fawns leading Alpha with Tilsiter, Urvu, Nolik, Bursty, Toms, and Tundi, and Alpha 2 has Alivares with Selwick, T, and Kajonovich. Bravo has Hunt and Tackleberry. Bravo 1 has Wheaton. Bravo 2 has Major Khan, Nekomata, and Nafs. Charlie led by Norris with Whiteside and Duets, then as the Medic. Michael leading Charlie 1 with Tendies, Hunt, and Smith. Charlie 2 has Depso, Kremit, Low Sweet, Cheeseburger, and Waldo. Green 4 being commanded by Arcane. Fun fact, Arcane is on the multi, so if you type exclamation point multi, you can see his POV in this operation and get a direct feed of what he is doing better than what I can predict the man is doing. Blam is going to be his 2IC. Wiki Quartz leading Alpha with Maxic, Helenars, Thomas, Rambo Bamba, Rocky 19, Templar, and Slotkiev uh, under him. Nemesis. Oh, God. So we have... I'll, I'll cover that at the end. Nemesis leading Bravo with Cass as the Marksman, Malin as the Medic, Puma and Bravo 1 with Daedalus, Iander, Bay and even freaking Bay is back. God damn. Uh, and Yanni, Finn, Cullis, Charlotte, SL, Dream, and Dobbs, and Bravo 2. And then Delta has Lola with Alexander, Mac Marine, Commander Pickles, Sam McBain, and Kabooby Face. They're taking all four of those FN Mag medium machine guns. So you're telling me. You are telling me. That Pierce is commanding the offensive side, and he's got to charge through open fields to get into the AO, and on defense, you have Scandi Recon with T5 Bay, aka Bayon, one of the best players in FNF. I would argue the best player at the moment, because Falcon, I don't know where he ever is, but... Oh, God... And then Green 4 has four medium machine gunners in Delta to set up lockdowns. That is... That is amazing. It looks like they're going for this area, and they're just using the Fortify tool to build second-story fortifications to Overwatch everything. Oh, my God. Uh, so when I say best player, Zam, I mean the best player overall. Audrey Hado holds the kill record, but he was never able to recreate that magic again. I think he only played FNF like three times. And his like second or third time, that's when he just went full sicko mode and killed everybody. Ah, <laughs> oh. That's one of those things where like years after it happened, I still haven't seen anyone get close. And if they do, it's usually because they're using a powerful asset. Like uh, World War II, when you have a bar gunner, an MG42 gunner against a bunch of dudes with K98s or, you know, bolt actions. Oh. All right, so Green 4 is just going to literally hold a four uh, tower perimeter here. Actually, I only see two towers back there. They've got some uh, sandbags built up. They need to build something out here. 
to hold Ooh. that side of the perimeter. But we'll just have to see how things go. We don't have enough people. How many kills? Did, so he officially got 21 kills, but he was oh, really? uh, eventually credited with 24. Because three of his kills were not counted because of uh, how grenades work. Sometimes the ace shrapnel doesn't credit you with the kill specifically. And he just he just went to town. Right. Still, I want to say the best yeah. PvP video I've ever covered. The fact that one man won a three-way fight after his entire squad got wiped. It's literally like watching a movie. How he systematically just eliminates everybody. Fuck, I should just stream a watch party of that and then just commentate it a second time. That thing was beautiful. Hell, I'll do it for its anniversary. I gotta go look at when that round was done. No FNF that day. We're just gonna cover the Adriano incident. It was so funny after that round got ran because it took another 20 minutes to run another round because the admins all got together and had to decide if he was cheating or not. Meanwhile, here I am watching him do everything so systematically perfect. And my argument for him not cheating was if he knew, if he was cheating, especially for his last kill, where he systematically cleared every single building before he went to the last building that had the last guy in it. Do you think someone hacking after killing 23 people is going to do that? Or do you think he's just going to get it over with at that point? The answer is no. That man was fighting for his freaking life, and he was being one of the most systematically tactical but aggressive players I had ever seen. And again, you're never going to see that magic again. Ever. But God, I wish we could. It was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. The man kept cycling through guns that he would, like, take from the dead. He would keep looting grenades. Like, it was just... God, it gives me goosebumps. Anyway, I've already outlined what Blue 4 is going to do here, unless... Actually, it's Pierce. I have no idea what the man's going to do. He's probably, instead of using this, he's going to go through every open field he can find, eventually getting to here, and then he's going to reroute and then use the open fields down here. That's what I'm calling. Oh, cool, and they're poppy fields. Even better. Now you'll see here is a Liru who has had his life in the works in his bathrobe with his dommy mommy Greek girlfriend work through college. Okay, fiance, first off. Second off, I'm actually not wearing the bathrobe right now. Um, bad news. We're not going to have any Daisy Friday streams for the next three weeks until we get to the 24-hour stream because of an amalgamation of scheduling between IRL stuff. Tonight, I'm going to an opera. We got lawn seating. Uh, we made a charcuterie board. I have my pomegranate mead in three bottles, and we also have a bottle of apple wine. We're going to enjoy ourselves. Next week, we're going to be gone Thursday to Saturday, and then the week after that is Otakon. I thought I was going to go Saturday. Bloodwind says, no, you're going Friday, so I'm going Friday all day. The week after that is the 24-hour Friday to Saturday stream. I will try to schedule one or two days e-streams on the weekend, uh, on Saturday or Sunday, t schedule dependent, but I mean, if you type yeah, if you type exclamation point schedule, I mean, you'll see tomorrow, for example, we have four streams and then something that says NDA on it, which means I can't stream, I can only record. Uh, but that's all back to back. Oh, that's all freaking back to back. But yeah, no. Um, and then on top of that, I'm adding more 12:30 slots. And then when I get back, hopefully I won't be too drunk tonight and I can actually, like, you know, put some stuff up. But, yeah, like I said, we'll see how things go. Yep. Okay, nothing is better than getting shit-faced at a concert or an opera or something and just, like, closing your eyes and taking it all in while you're in a drunken stupor, all right? It hits different. Yeah, so we see Green 4 gravitating towards the borders of these territories. I'm willing to bet they're going to run out and try to take some of those second-story buildings. There's no reason they shouldn't. And then just having one squad on the rear guard right here, what honestly should happen, though, 
is one squad should separate in its two teams, take one building, take one building, one squad should take these buildings, and then one squad should stay internally. And where they detect contacts... If it's from the south, these buildings hold an engage, the central garrison holds an engage, these guys fan out and flank. If these guys take contact, they hold an engage, center holds an engage, these guys fan out. But by separating these two buildings, they offer an opportunity to, let's say this building takes contact, they can pull back, this group can cover them with machine gun fire, the central garrison here can hold, this building can also cover, and then that building can fan out and engage. You gotta really work on, I wanna say, fire team size elements here for the fact that it's only about 65, 70 players. And I see more people connecting. Let me now just check in the channel. Yeah, so we're up to 70 now. So again, 35v35, that's still only like platoon v platoon, under staff platoon, mind you. So three full squads of like 10 and then a command team of five. You know, Zam, I'd be willing to bet $20 that you've never tried LSD. I don't know why. I have a really good feeling, but I, I think you're full of shit. <laughs> I think you're full of shit. All right, but regardless, Green 4, I think they're just really well set on their plan. They don't know where Blue Force spawn is, though, so what's concerning to me is... I mean, they're lucky that Blue Force is going to spawn down here, but, you know, this is a really big gamble because if Blue Force spawned down here and goes in, that leaves a lot of Green Force out of position. All right, but otherwise, uh, round has officially started. We're seeing multiple groups going out, and we got a lot of fortifications in here, which shows me that I think they plan to pull units back. And then we got Blue Force just immediately trailing everything south. No surprise. I think they're just going to run for it. They know that these open fields are going to be fine because Green 4, there's no way in hell they would fan out that far. So it's just going to be a triple time sprinting experience for the next 10 minutes. And then five minutes of taking the first sector closer to them and then another five to 10 minutes of maneuvering and then contact within the 20 to 25 minute mark after half the round is gone. So we've got plenty of time to bullshit. What's on your guys' mind? <laughs> We'll cover blue four as they go in, occasionally go and check on green four. Oh, I'm not talking about you, bro. I'm talking about Zam. <laughs> I've also noticed he got really quiet after that statement. Otherwise, betting appears to be 77,000 for Pierce. And what is that, 133 for green four? Under 35. I'm going to be honest, safe bet would be green four. Radical bet would be blue four. Odds, I would say, are definitely more in Green Force's favor, especially with how their units are being deployed here. But, I mean, you never know. Blue Force can uh, <laughs> can do something amazing. Sam being full of shit? Never, right? I just, I want to see one of these squads go over an open field and get gunned down by something. Um... Uh, so the way we do, we tend to approach in line, and then we have two sections. So when we go in line, action on contact will be one section will hold, or one element will hold and lay down base of fire, while the other fixes and flanks. So unless we're already engaged, we won't set up a base of fire. We'll just assign a team as the default base of fire team, and that team responds. Yeah, we do. I always see one that we have the giant blob. This is actually wholesome. We need a little bit of training. I've been slacking off the training, that is why. Because here's the thing. I, I joke about Pierce all the time, but he's actually a very good commander. Could be better with some rockets. And he's actually teaching Zixmi how to command. <laughs> For those of you that have seen OFCRA content, Zixmi is one of the best PvPers over there. I wouldn't claim he's the best one here because we have players like Bayon tonight. But damn, that is wholesome as fuck. Teaching Zixmi how to freaking command. What a day. <laughs> you know, I think it would be funny if they added uh, knives to Friday Night Fights. However, the bullshit you would get in the animations of being able to stab, like, multiple people at once. Fix bayonet and charge them, man. Good God. 
No, no, Zixmi is an absolute monster because he... How would I word this? When people play PvP... Also, there's a misfire right there. I think they fired at their own uh, Hunt IR rounds, maybe mis IDing it because there's no way Blue 4 over here to launch that. But when people play PvP, they generally aim center mass. They aim for your torso and they mag dump. Because that's just what they're instinctually trained to do. Zixmi is a monster because he doesn't aim for your chest. He aims for your head. And it takes only one bullet to headshot you and insta-kill you. And that man has perfected just locking in on someone's head and immediately blowing them away. Now, it's still Arma. So, you know, if your other player is doing a similar tactic or if they get lucky or their, you know, stability's off and their gun goes up and they hit you in the head, that happens. And Zixmi still gets gunned down on occasion. He still will get flanked. But that man... I'm gonna be honest. He's what every Scandi Recon player strives to be. In terms of he's very aggressive, he's very accurate. I would say Scandi in their prime, when they would bring a full squad of like 10 to 12 players, they were the equivalent of one Zixmi in the field. <laughs> With the, uh, basically just having more lives to do it though, because, you know, a group of 12 that are playing, I want to say at, you know, a 75% skill level compared to one guy playing at like a 90% skill level. That 75 can at least, you know, take casualties, take mistakes, and outlast. Because there are a lot of good players in PvP that, you know, a lot more also get lucky. But Zixmi, when he is only dealing with a handful of people in front of him, will blow people away. If you were watching yesterday and you saw Twig King, uh, he's also gotten up there in terms of people that you do not want to be against when you only have small amounts of units remaining. That man literally took the only scorable option from the German side and just kicked it into the dust with a mat, like <laughs> 10 kills in the last like 10 minutes. And he literally snatched those final points away from the German attackers. It was freaking amazing to watch. But I'm going to be honest, the only reason those players are so good is because they've done not only so much PvP, but they've been in so many situations that it's been a clutch or kick scenario <laughs> where they're forced to learn and put into practice what they do in those uh, nail biters, really. Oh, and there's what's that coming in to be a Debbie Downer. How you doing? What's that? Were there no more orphanages to bulldoze? Is that why you're here? <laughs> And, Bro, what did you think of Scandi? Again, they tend to be very, very aggressive. However, that aggression can also be their undoing. I've seen multiple times where they're sent out into the wilderness, and then they completely overextend themselves. And by the time their final AO is getting hit, they're trying to rush back into the AO, but it's too late. I've seen that play out way too many times. Hey, welcome, Charlie. Well, they haven't really changed, though, in half a year. I mean, they've been doing F and F for, I think, as long as I've been commentating on it. Am I excited for the Stillwater Op tomorrow? Obsidian, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be recording and or streaming five different things, and Stillwater's the last one on that list. So, I don't... I can't say I'm excited because I just have a full plate, <laughs> you know? But... You know, still water, still water. I'll see how things go. We got a Hunt IR getting launched up. They're going to do reconnaissance for the objective right there. But again, they're not going to find anything. Interesting concave they're trying to make. But the northern side that I think is going to flank around on this line is lagging behind. I do find it funny that I literally predicted what Blue 4 was going to do. <laughs> but without any resistance there, you're just going to have someone charge. And it might be Depso at this point. As uh, he comes up and sees that he's not taking fire. So they're just going to run up and hit the sector. And then what's worrisome is we need to see this force then hold. Because if they advance while this force is still going around, these guys are going to push in and get defeated in detail. And then it's just going to bulldoze on blue four because green four is going to, you know, just have us all defensive line. So we'll have to see how things go. We're robbing a bank. Why is it every time in Stillwater Security Solutions when we get wiped and something doesn't go our way, we just decide, <laughs> we're going to rob a bank. 
Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. I do not really have a good bank robbing gun, though. I've got a Mosin. I guess I'll bring the Mosin. Because payday, yeah, right? I should do what, drunk? <laughs> I got three bottles of homebrew chilling in my fridge right now for tonight, but... I don't want to get started on that early, because then Bloodwind's going to be very mad at me. Banks should just stop being so robbable. <laughs> <laughs> Way too many people in chat are piping up about that. <laughs> Broar, shut up. <laughs> How's life with the Greek wife? You got married already? No, that's uh, October 2025. We're doing wedding prep right now. And that brings its own pains and migraines. But look at this. So this force is setting up a base of fire here. I think they're waiting for everyone else to get into position. I'm just waiting for Charlie 2 to actually put their head in there and realize that that's an empty sector. Piece of shit drill. <laughs> we should just have a few people playing Stillwater with uh, payday quotes on their uh, soundboard. Just to play that, right? You'll expect it in the mail? Alright. We'll see. Shoot me a message on Discord. Liru, the thermal drill. Go get it. I mean, again, that's going to be the last stream tomorrow. So, I mean, God, here's here's the schedule, if I can even redo it from memory. Uh, noon, I was originally going to host an op, but then I got contacted by a group of individuals that may or may not be doing something that I may or may not be allowed to talk about right now, but I'll eventually post it on the VOD channel. But I digress. Um, they want me to come in to, you know, look at some stuff and give my opinion. So it's like, all right, cool. The only people that do that are usually Arma 3 uh, CDLC owners. But anyway, um, <laughs> or Bohemia, but regardless. Uh, then we have the first stream, second recording technically, is going to be 3 o'clock. That's going to be Revy's group, the 31st Steel Legion, so a 40k scenario in the jungle on the NOM map. Second op is going to be on the ground uh, at TML. That's going to be another 40k thing. I'm on the ground, though, because my buddy Doc is Zeusing, and he is really, really good at that. Uh, and building stories with that. So I want to, you know, just check that out. Then we have 7 o'clock. That's going to be the 777th. I'm going to be flying a Hornet around and probably bullying Vix for funsies. And then trying to squish their um, unit commander because uh, they keep stealing my freaking guns. I'm not allowed to keep any of them. I hate it. Uh, and then what the hell is that? Is that a dog? <gasps> it's a god. Of course, leave it to my freaking dumb ass to, like, see that in the distance and go, what? Is that what I think it is? Anyway, uh, and then the final stream is going to be at 10 o'clock with uh, Stillwater Security Solutions. So, yeah, all of that. Maybe waterboard Liru, I don't know, bro. But, yeah, that's, that's my Saturday. So, it's going to be literally nonstop streaming from... 3 o'clock to midnight. Uh, it, with one break, I think, around, like, 9.30 to 10. Because usually the uh, 777th goes 7 to 9. 12 wallow in my self-loathing. I'm booked, bro. I didn't know you were the Grinch. Oh, wait, hold on. Depso and Tendi is running through the open. Let's see if Charlie shoots at him. Uh, I see... S s uh, 10? All right, real quick, I'm going to mute myself locally so we don't hear anyone that dies. But yeah, then Sunday, we're, we're going to probably have an off at 12.30, and then uh, 3 p.m. is going to be with Zog, and then 7 o'clock is, you know, my D&D bullshit, so. More people running through the open. I want to see if the Grenadier actually gets a hit there. These guys, I think, are going to immediately be ordered to pull out, but that's just going to extend the game time. Ark's just trying to scare me here. <laughs> All right. Depso suppressing with that mini mean it's some really good suppression. I mean, good thing Green 4 ran off. Green 4, meanwhile, looks like they're fighting rooftops because Kabooby fell off. What a genius.
Well, that sounds great, Obsidian. Hopefully you won't get murdered. <laughs> oh, shit. A woman. Here, I'll give you guys a deal. If Bloodwing comes downstairs to the basement because she has stuff. She's been printing nonstop on her 3D printer because she's going to go to Otakon. She's doing cosplay stuff. If she comes downstairs, I will literally just stop what I'm doing, look at her, and go, oh, shit, a woman. All right? We'll see if we can startle her. How about that? Your money's on Pierce. Gonna be honest, could go either way. We already see this group uh, engaging stragglers at the moment. They're being forced to pull back. But if Blue Four can maintain a solid battle line going into Sector 2, I think they might be able to actually overwhelm the defenders here. But the, the early on tell of who is going to win is going to rely on the attrition. Whoever starts taking casualties more often... As both groups transition to the final fight, which is going to be for Sector 2 down there, is going to tell you who's going to win this. I love how Ark also comes in and tells me how to speak to her in Greek. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a few terms I know already, though. I said N, not on. Why is your money in Pierce, though? What what does that even mean, Broar? That's some Norwegian slang I'm supposed to understand. Kabubi went kasplatty. Oh, God. All right. Not going to lie. What's that? When you hit, you hit. That one was kind of funny. <laughs> I heard the goat. So, some maps, they replace the bunnies and the snakes with other animals. Mole of Kintyre, I think, does goats and sheep. This map appears to do goats, and I would also assume maybe sheep, but we'll see how things go. Pierce never pulls out. Next time I talk to him on stream, I'll ask him that. How about that, if you remind me? That'll be up to you, though. More shots from blue four on the green four positions as they're pulling back. I'll be curious to see if Scandy here tries to set up an ambush of sorts, like hide a guy in the uh, tall grass and maybe throw a nade or something just to mess with him. Oh, Ark, it <laughs> Arma never gets updates, buddy. It's all mods gonna be honest i think all of the gear that the players are using are from mods the map is mods the interface is modded i guess technically custom scripted but nah bro i think the only thing that's on the interface here that's vanilla is the tracer scripts they are that i think is actually them. like og arma dev created Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's part of the vanilla. Like, the spectator interface itself is partially vanilla, but I think it's ace. But the tracer effect is uh, definitely vanilla. But suffice to say, Arma's just a, uh, <laughs> it's a sandbox for modders. Always has been since, I want to say, Arma 2? I think Re Cold War Assault, though, had mods, too, but... Samuel taking some Grenadier fire. Blue 4 trying to move through some of these open areas here. They're utilizing some of the concealment through these little shrubberies to move by. But Green 4 isn't really in a range to exploit the fact that Blue 4 has to move through open fields. Though that will change as Blue 4 is forced to move closer. The question is, can Blue 4 get its marksmen and machine gunners in uh, positions to actually take enemy players out? So Tills Hitter should be aiming for that guy. He gets a body shot on him. I hit the squad leader in the chest. Can I get a range? Was Blam? Blam was the squad leader, yeah. No, he's commander, because he's got the... Uh, <laughs> he's under uh, the command company element there. But otherwise, Charlie actual... Norris stayed behind to actually capture the sector. 
And that was to basically not tip off the fact that Blue 4 is already so close to the other sector. So look at what Green 4 has done. They've gone into transitioning from the sector to actually just making a solid defensive line here to stall out Blue 4 as much as they can. We saw some AT fired, but it detonated early. And now we're just going to have a massive battle line versus a bit of a thinner battle line because Green 4 still has some rear security. But with Blue 4 opening up with an 8% number advantage, I'm going to be honest, if Blue 4 can get some good pickoffs before Green 4 can pull back, could still swing in Blue 4's favor, but there haven't been any KIAs yet. But I think that's going to change once we have to see, uh, actually start seeing Blue 4 doing some uh, forward maneuvers. But it's really going to rely on who wins the uh, local fights because that then frees up forces to then start flanking the other elements. So just a lot more maneuver time, some initial suppression time. But again, I was close in my prediction of we wouldn't see any contact till around the 20 minute mark. That started, I want to say, five, eight minutes early with uh, Green 4 pushing up to that tower. But now the main contact has started. Engage. Still no KIA yet. They're burning their fire on the smoke up here. McBain trying to hide under this bush. Taking some pretty nasty suppression. Still nothing. Oh, there we go. Oh, fucking hell. That was the squad leader for Alpha getting uh, immediately well, picked well, off. Friend needs to be east, man. For fuck's sake. <laughs> and that's Fawn speaking. Forgot to mute myself locally. There we go. No, you could hear his voice right there. Selwick thinks there's contact off to their left. That's an interesting call. Now you got Blue 4 and Green 4 squaring off over here. And these are Scandi players. It's Bayon. Yep. Already up a kill. Gonna put a GL up there to double tap. Gets it very, very close. So Blue 4 down two in the opening. It's Nafs and Fawns. Nafs a really good player himself for these small squad engagements. But the way Blue 4 is trickling forces up here against Scandi, I mean, that's... That's going to be tough, buddy, because Scandi excels on squad v squad. And if you trickle the squad in, they're just going to get picked off. Got a green four defensive group over here on the right. Looks like they're exchanging ammos because they're both FN mag gunners. Got players like Lolo trying to range everything in. But again, it's going to be a slow push as we now have Blue 4 charging a few Green 4 in the central line. Green 4 still on no KIA. Blue 4 still only on two. Depso trying to push. I think he still has that mini-me. Very good weapon to have in CQC as more Blue 4 starting to move in. Patriot and Tom are running from the central position. Green 4 going to be creating a gap to then put a tree line down to exploit. But Dream now taking fire as he quickly pops the smoke. Though this position, it doesn't look like they have any ability to really lock this area down. Patriot now taking fire. Forced to pop smoke as well. Ash gets knocked. Nakapata, no, Nakamata up here opening fire on a random building where he thinks he's taking fire. Catch trying to move out here with this uh, PSO M76. They're trying to double tap Ash. Can't seem to do it. Smokes down in the open field here as these guys continue to try to move along. Blue 4 now taking fire as they come in. I'm waiting to see Green 4 now look in this direction and start engaging. But we do have a little bit of a murder hole use right here. If Sam could line up the shot, he's throwing some grenades out to be safe. Lolo also utilizing this small window here. He, they've got access to uh, locking down the central zone and turning it into a kill zone from that building. Gazan gets knocked out. Ash is double taps. Cullis and Iander have been killed off. Blue 4, meanwhile, Ash died. Gazog wakes back up. 
So casualties are now back to being roughly even. And Blue Force continuing their maneuvering, but look at how spaced out. We got some teams now going on a wide flank, some teams going down the middle. A little worried about seeing this because if Blue Force continues to move on a really nasty concave Green Force set up, the only team... Uh, let me walk that back. This group is either going to then start attacking the far flank or go all the way around and hit the sector itself, but by leaving the other forces to fight a majority of the Green Four line and these guys going all the way around, they could find themselves being defeated in detail. Wow, if Pickles wasn't in that building, he would have died to a small 40 millimeter round used like a mortar. From I want to say these Blue Four moving in. That's a crazy thought, though. If you have a 40 millimeter grenade launcher, you could put a Hunt IR in the air. You could fire the roundup at maximum range, and then I think you'll have enough time to get into the Hunt IR and watch the round come in, and then you can adjust. That would be something. Better yet, give the Hunt IR terminal to one of your squaddies and have him watch the rounds go in and you just communicate over the radio. Ranging in with a smoke round or two. Ooh, and we just saw a blue four guy get sniped from Sam on the side. He's using that FN mag in the window and he's very well concealed right there. But yeah, blue four is there trying to come up the flank. We even see Depso got hit there. He's stuck prone. And more Blue Four just came up, only to get immediately tapped by Bayon. He's up to two kills now. Looks like that group of three that tried to move up is now trying to go through the central riverbed. And Bayon gets that second kill. Interesting. We got a sapper team of three now trying to move around to get the objective. If they are successful, that's going to cause a mass route back to the zone. Green 4 doesn't have anyone in the zone specifically, so if all three of those guys get in, they could also be creating a corridor for the rest of Alpha to follow, but I don't think they're going to go for the objective themselves. It looks like they're instead going to uh, crew the second story building. But if they could lead the rest of Alpha and actually put pressure on the objective itself, I think Blue 4 could still win this by stealing the objective out from under uh, Green 4. Pierce is still alive. He's on the back line on the far right. Blue 4 trying to move him, but now they're taking fire as they try to move up the riverbed. And they just haven't been able to get any momentum here because Green 4 has a solid defensive line. I'm going to be honest. I think Pierce's best bet now is to just hold the Green 4 outside of the objective and then just send his squad around and go for broke because there's just way too much resistance on this entire line for him to properly push. That is where he could still win. Because even if he were to take this force and try to flank this green four element to alleviate pressure, he still has this massive battle line to do with over here. So why not just bypass all of green four's defenses and go straight for the objective? And I think that's what he's starting to do with this force coming around. I think he's gonna realize he's facing way too much solid resistance for Green 4 to have any rear security on the objective itself, so that's why he's going to start routing an entire squad around. All he needs to do now is keep Blue 4 back here and keep the defensive line going. Wheaton trying to noob to. Bay gets his third kill. This chucklehead. Wheaton's tired of people, man. He's got the freaking AT4 out. He's going to even do medical. But Bay on three. Yeah, and Alpha's all of Pierce's men from 1RW, so they're going to follow him to a T. Meanwhile, this center group, all they need to do is just stay there and look pretty and just keep Green 4 pinned. But we need to continue to see this element fold over. I think they're waiting for those rear guys to get in. 
So Blue Four's line just needs to hold for about five minutes. That's all Blue Four is going to need for this force to come in over here. And you can see that even the rear positions are firing at this central group. So Charlie just needs to hold and get good defensive lines out. So if Green Four starts folding back, they can be engaged. I think Blue Four have a really solid plan here. They just need to execute it. And it's going to really rely on this element to get around. What we don't want to see is these guys come around and hit this position. Because by the time they open that up, that's going to cause these guys to pull back. And they're going to get flanked. Wheaton, I think, just took Bay out. Yep. I think that was the AT4 we heard. He just noob-tubed Bay. <laughs> to guarantee the kill. And, I mean, if you're playing against really good players like that, the best thing for you to do is, yes, use the AT4. But that's now freaking this line out and pulling them back. That's not what Pierce wants in this instance. But now what concerns me is we're seeing fire being exchanged right here. And now Bravo is pulling forces back and they're forming a defensive line against that force. I think that just closed the gap and now Pierce is kind of screwed here. Because he's causing the big defensive line to pull back and form a final perimeter here. And I think Blue Force taking too much attrition damage. To still be viable. Because now everything back here is just going to turn and engage Alpha. They're going to be forced to do some... Uh... Actually, they don't even really have to do that. They can just stick to the tree line right here and stay concealed. But now they're going to... They're going to open field smoke push it. But the thing is, if these guys feel pressured, now they're just going to call for backup over here. So... Now you got these three flanking, but they're immediately spotted. Kabubi gets a kill. Samuel and Kajonovic are going to keep going. They're taking some neighboring fire, though. Then we got Tilsitter all the way back here. I don't know what he's doing. He's trying to pick people off. He is up a kill, though, so I won't knock it. Lolo gets caught in a 2v1 and gets taken out. However, they're cut off as MacMarine comes out. He gets some shots down and some hits on Kajonovic. Kajonovic double tapping the body to be safe. Mac trying to lock that angle down. Now what this opens up is for these groups to regroup and push in because Pierce has lost a lot on his left side. And Scandi's now pushing back to help form the final defensive perimeter. But again, you're just having this group coming out. They're going to get defeated in detail as they reform the line here. These guys are going to reform and then push in. But by then, I think these guys are going to fold in as well. It's just... <clears throat> Blue Force being a little too aggressive in positions where they needed to be a bit more stealthy. And Green Force just capitalizing on standard defensive attrition by blocking down open areas with high ground. It's a great grenade, and I think Mac heard it bounce upstairs, so he's now folding out. He's got an FN mag for CQC. Not the worst gun in the world. But if he comes out and he peers right... Oh, he's going to corner hold instead, which... Wow, Samuel beats him out. I think that's because the M16 he has has a slightly better fire rate than the FN mag. But notice how they're forcing Green Four here to go into 1v1s. Commander Pickles, though, on the roof, gets a hit. He takes a hit, though. I don't know from what angle. It's back here. Whiteside spotted him, got a few marksman hits, but it wasn't quick enough. And now Samuel's going to come in and breach that building. He folds back to L more, actually, and he's going to instead do some medical work. Blue 4 running back here to get in a little bit of defilade cover. 
But looking at the map, look at all the green four in the middle, and look at where blue four is kind of separated out. I think green four actually have the number advantage at the moment. It looks very close. I think actually blue four might just have one or two additional at this point, but they're very spaced out. But Delta is going to be caught out here. Maybe we still have Alexander and Kabubi stay in that building. Maybe they can find an angle and suppress a few groups running through the open. But not with these trees in the way. Massive smoke charge being seen. We got some suppressive fire going north. That Samuel trying to come around and spot pickles here. He's going to throw a great grenade that's going to get Pickles. Beautiful throw. And he's still going to tactically breach it. And Pickles has no idea what hit him. Because he was busy locking down this window trying to see anyone that came in. Double tapping shots going on. Man, I, hate, I had a thing of coffee before I started this stream, and I'm still yawning, man. I guess just a tired day for me. Puma now with the PKM. Trying to pick off some blue four coming in. He's unable to land a hit there. Blue four have been mostly cleaned up on the right side, though. Let's look at Alpha. Alpha is half gone. They've only got six active on the right. RPG fired. Hits a building. 15-minute call. Blue 4 pushing this zone and taking it in 15 minutes. It looks possible, but there's a lot of defensive groups on the zone itself. We got some green 4 taking cover by a down shopper. Smoke's in the way. I'm surprised this mission's going to go to the entire time, but at the same time, it's a 3 by 4 kilometer AO, so no surprise there. You got Puma doing a wide suppression, actually getting Gazog knocked out, but he wakes back up. Pickles got pickled, good God. And between the rest of our defenders here, I mean, let's look at the back line real quick. Dream's gotten a kill with the PKM, but that's it. They're just gonna lock down people on the right side, but now the final attack's gonna be from the left. You got a few stragglers trying to come in. Alexander, the only guy up because his battle buddy went to the rooftop. Never a good idea to do that when you're in the middle of enemy territory because you have no cover up there. Explosive charges going off. Did it net any kills though? I don't see any. I think that's because Blue Force is just transitioning over to the right and they're trying to charge in. So I think that was a miss ID on some of the buildings. I hope this building would also be rigged because it's a second story and it has decent eyes on the AO. Green 4 pulled off of that down chopper site. We see a smoke grenade in play. And you got a massive blue 4 line that can now come into the AO. And I'm going to be honest, a bit of a lack of green 4 looking in that direction. You have a lot of green 4 that can then respond if blue 4 get their foot in the AO. But we got some stragglers of green 4 on the southern side still getting taken out. This is still anyone's game because green 4's positioning is so hyper-focused on the groups on the right. We need to see some adjustments. Explosions going off. One of the green four guys, the one with Maxic, went down. More charges going off to deter blue four's advance. We see some additional blue four that are trying to move around, getting picked off on the southern side. That line's gotten a little bit smaller now. But there's a direct line to the headquarters. Not a lot of green forge specifically defending it. Too much are looking around on the rear. Some are even going aggressive on the other side. Blue four might be able to rush in here. So here's what I think we're gonna have see uh, go down here. Blue four is gonna potentially rush into the sector and then green four is gonna turn everything around and try to counterattack it immediately. Otherwise, they lose. We do have some green four on the southern side here trying to stall this assault. <coughs> Max 6 still in a pretty good position. 
If he can find some angles on blue four, that would be ideal. More explosives going off on the corner. But you got blue four in this tree line right on top of the objective. It's going to be up to a player named Vagrant to stop him. Quick grenade goes out. That's right on Iqbal's feet. And Iqbal gets blown away. His grenade gets caught in the tree. Maxic getting some great grenade throws in here. It gets caught in the bush, though. Depso gets killed. Waldo gets knocked out. Great hidden grenade plays here by Maxic there. And I think between Vagrant and Maxic, they've stopped the initial wave of momentum. There's still more blue four trickling in, but that might give enough time for green four to turn forces around and set up a defensive line in the central zone. Now I can safely say Green 4 has the number advantage. You got everything now trying to trickle in on all sides, but Green 4 have taken a majority of their numbers and turned them over to the west. And now I think Green 4 has proper eyes on a full 360 around the sector based off of where we see the spread of Blue 4. And it's weird because we do have some weird stragglers on the southern side, some going far north, but at that point they're countering the stragglers that Blue 4 has. Blue 4 are down to four people on this line. We just saw another Blue 4 guy try to charge in and get gunned down by Nemesis. Malin on two, Nem on one. Charlotte on none, but trying to maneuver in. Maxic though, still in a good position on the rear. We don't see these two guys waking up. Thanks to his grenade, he is a marksman, so he could try to sight in some headshots here. He's gonna catch Kazog with the AT out, but he quickly runs in, but Maybe Maxic tries to get on the rear and pick off the remaining blue four on this line. Gazag immediately hitting the dirt. Maxic coming up. One taps him immediately in the face and immediately runs before Dewitson can turn around. Maxic might take friendly fire though. He's gotta be careful. Grenades I think going wildly out. Those are smoke. Dewitson gets spotted and knocked. And Maxic getting the double tapping shots. And there's the next one. So Maxic officially on three, but it should be five based on the fact that he's got two knockouts here. One of them wakes back up though. Maxic needs to run up and check on it. He might. He's gonna catch Loski here. Or Losui. Oh, that was a nail biter because he almost missed those shots. Double taps the other body. He is officially on five. And he seems very excited about that. <laughs> Wait, no, he's got to get Waldo for the fifth one because the other body was bled out. I don't think he's going to do it, though, because Waldo, I don't think he's waking up. All right, we see some fighting over here. Green 4 had Tomer and Patriot coming out. Tomer is dead. Patriot now fighting Tilsitter and Samuel. Five kills between the two of them, though. White side on the northern side. Maxic gets that double tap kill after he goes back to check on him. Good call. But I think it's GG here. Nine minutes remaining. Uh, Blue 4 just got out attrition. There were a few times where they could have bounced back, but fate decided nah. I love how you have this man hiding in the back here. He's dropped his radio. Samuel slowly checking, bleeding a little bit. Dream I did not, I'm so sorry. got two more that's bursty and tom's coming around from alpha they've literally done this massive flank around michael just got knocked out white side still over here that's fine dream i'm gonna be honest i'm very tired so uh <laughs> i might not have the energy for a co-comment but i'm willing to give it a try and white side just took a rocket in his building he got ragdolled, but he's not. I think he's dead, and the game just glitched out. Yeah, he's on a skull, but it still has his uh, arrow right there. <laughs> Bro just got noob tube by an AT4, and now Green Four is pushing. That's so funny. 
Patriot gets a grenade thrown in his building. He's going to go low. Good use of his body there. He's going to throw a second grenade and go low. Counter pushes. Beats out Tilsitter. And where's Samuel? Samuel's still corner camping. Smoke's going in. Frag gets thrown in last second. Patriot survives. He's going to triple time charge out of here. Bro's crazy. He charges out. Samuel trying to time a grenade. He throws it. But Patriot gets over the wall. The man's out for blood. The man is out for blood. I can't believe this. Tilsitter wakes back up, though. Whiteside's still dead. I don't know why he has a marker still. I think just the game bugged out on him. Oh, there he goes. Then you got the two blue four coming up. Malin on the opposite side, though. He's up two kills. Bursty trying to army crawl it up. Blue four's pulled back. Patriot just going to corner, and I think he's bandaged. Malin, meanwhile, finds Bursty and takes him out. Tom's the only one up on this side. And he has no idea what to do because his battle buddy just got taken out. So he's going to try to reposition. And he's just running for it. I think Malin just double tapped the body. Five minutes remaining, it's it's over. Yeah, that guy double tapping the blue four bodies up here. Wiki Court's now firing at Samuel. Gets a hit on Samuel, a second hit. Somehow the rounds ricocheted and hit his arms instead. You can see both his left and right arm hit. On the shoulders. Where is Patriot? Did he get picked off? I guess he did. I don't see him anymore. No, he ran back and he requested reinforcements. So he's getting patched up by the medic and now four green four are coming in. That's a grenade. Wait, what the hell? Um, wait a minute. Huh. Never mind. All right, four minutes remaining. We're going to follow Tom's here. Who's triple tiding? Can Tom's channel is in or Audrey Hado? Blah, blah. I will be right back. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine. Maybe. Probably.
mic caught that. Please tell me the mic just caught that. <laughs> oh my god. I love my job. Alright. Anyway, who won that? <laughs> Uh, green four defending. Great. Awesome. Yeah. I, I don't think he was alive anymore. Meteor shower. Oh, God. That's a lot of shit. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely freaking brilliant. All right. Uh, anyway, we'll be back in a moment. As an Arma 3 content creator, one of the most common questions I get from fans is where can I find a good Arma 3 unit to play in? One of my biggest recommendations is milsimunits.com. You can click on the Arma button on the main browser, and it'll take you to a page where you can see various different Arma unit listings. Each listing has a nice picture representing the unit, a brief synopsis, and the information you need to join the unit. Unit leaders can also sign up on the website for free by simply joining the website's Discord. So if I'm reading this right... This is a destroy five. What? Okay, all right, all right. Blue four is attacking five up for caches and a terminal site. Okay. Blue 4 has a 5% numbers advantage. 2 UH 60s. 3 M2 strikers. 2 M240 M113s. And LAV 25 and transport while op4 has four zu 23s four core <laughs> okay okay two dishkas Three M two forty statics with Elkin scopes, a BTR eighty and a BTR eighty A. Okay, that's an interesting one. I'll take it. Listen to blow it up instead. <sighs> okay. Because why not? That's a lot of stuff. And I guess Dream is not going to join me for the co casting booth. That's fine. They're down to 62 players. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I'd imagine those ZU-23s are going to be at, like, the top of hills or in fortifications that prevents them from firing on infantry. Because that would be really, really... I'm going to be off based if they didn't, but knowing how FNF is with uh, stuff like that, it's probably locked down into something. Uh... One second. <laughs> here, here. You know, I like to meme. We haven't memed in a while. There we go. 
What? Wait, can I set that to zero and zero? I think I took the cooldown away, so hold on. If I refresh the page and just check it. Yes, you can spam it. That's great. That's great. Awesome. There. That'll give you something to spam when we get there. <laughs> Let's see how long it takes for them to get to this uh, second round here, and we'll see how things go from there. I think based off of time, uh, since that first round went to the entire 65 minutes, I think I'm only going to be able to cover two rounds today. Because I know Bloodway and I, we need to still pack a few things and then get out of there before things fill up. I need to make it bits for a claimable soundbite. Is that what we should do? Have some uh, nice little sound bites to play while we do PvP. Is that something you guys would be interested in? Because I can put it on the docket. Daisy later. Uh, no, if you check the schedule, I'm uh, I'm gonna be busy this evening. In fact, we're not going to have any Friday Daisy for like the next three weeks until we get to the 24 hour stream, unfortunately. So we're just waiting for them to push through with this. But yeah, no, um, unless this round, even if this round goes super quick, I don't think I have time to cover round three, unfortunately, because it could go all the way to 630, but we have to be out of the door by like 545. Yeah, that's life. I'm really curious to see how this AO is done, though. Blue 4, I'm assuming those strikers aren't the crow system strikers. Those have to be the turnout strikers. But where in Fapovo would this be? Send in GOAT Team 6 now. Opinions on the first round? And also War Games next Saturday. You should watch it. There are no strikers. No, okay, so 1240s are MRAPs then. Hold on. I'm getting the designation wrong in my head then. Which is also going to be interesting because that means they're going to be flippable. But anyway, Malin, we'll see because I'll be coming back uh, from a vacation that day. So I don't know what time I'm going to be getting back. So it's a big maybe on that front. Uh, that's what I told Nemesis. But thank you for the 71 month resub, buddy. Hope you keep enjoying the operations. I do hope you get a nice kick out of this scenario. little bit of a low download speed there good god i think someone's hamster accidentally ate something they weren't supposed to oh well cords can puncture an mrap uh 
I know 12.7 can puncture a Humvee, but an MRAP I'm not 100% sure about. Oh, the hamster's waking up. He's spinning. <laughs> there he go. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I'm supposed to fill this out, but honestly, I don't feel like it. Awesome. All right, let me go ahead and set up the prediction. And this is going to be blue for attacking, op for defending. And I am also going to set it for 20 minutes. So we have three of these little ship things. There's a fourth one outside of the map. Blue 4 is on one of them. And then Op 4 is defending the entire town of Baranta. Bratna, that's it. We got some uh, blackened areas out here. We'll be Siri, uh, trying to check out what those are. And I'm assuming this is some sort of landing craft or something. Who's Op 4 GC? We don't know yet. I will check in a moment. But feel free to wait before you put any bets down. Let's uh, try to see who is doing what on the scenario first. Maybe the hamster just needed some water. Yeah, speaking of. Uh, I'm thirsty. <laughs> well, you got to remember, Accord and Adishka uh, both fire the same caliber of weapon, 12.7. Technically, NSVs are also supposed to... They, they're supposed to fire 14.5, but I think the game still has them calibrated to fight, uh, fire 12.7. All right. From there, we'll see how things go. So right off the bat, Blue 4, I need to get on the MSR. Well, technically SSR, actually, because the MSR is the thick yellow line. They could then come all the way around and drive up on the northern side. That would give Op 4 a lot more time to deploy, or they can just go in through this side, I think. For the sake of where they would reposition the AO, that's not really going to change much tactically. Because either way, they're going to be bottlenecked because of hills and then these low roads. So just go in the direct route. They could put some Overwatch elements up high, but then they have to worry about the ZU's, uh, ZU-23s. Or they could stay on the low ground and push in through here and try to use some cover fire. But I guess we'll just have to see how things go. NSV is also 12.7. It's a KPV. That's 14.5. Thanks. Sorry. Let's get the show on the road. So we're going to be starting with mission details. Tasks for Blue 4 are to destroy. Oh, so they have to destroy a cache and all four ZU-23 guns. That should be interesting. And they also have to hack a terminal. Op 4, meanwhile, have to defend at least one of those objectives by the end of the round to win. And, of course, FNF rules, if you wipe your opponent, you win by proxy. Briefing here, mission details. It's 1,500 meters of render distance. Fortify points are 175. Fortify color is going to be green, and the time limit is 50 minutes. Notes, the AA gun double as destroy objectives you can still use them as usual due to the destroy objectives being more tanky than usual blue four has been given four additional demo blocks one for each objective interesting 
Building of fortifications on top or inside the underground areas is prohibited. Using the AA guns against ground assets and or moving them from their original position is prohibited. Blue Force loadouts are going to be Navy Special Forces kits. Damn, that aircraft area is really close in here. Otherwise, I got the duck bill pilot helmet. So, Mark 18s with 320 grenade launchers. We have the Mark 11 marksman rifle. Uh, M249 light machine gunner, uh, li my, yeah, my light machine gun for the light machine gunners, AT4 for the uh, light anti-tank, a Maz for the medium anti-tank, and then crewmen get the MP7. They have an LAV25, four transport trucks, two M113s. Okay, yeah, so the 1240, it's the uh, MRAP with the 50 cal up top. That's uh, up armored, and then two UH-60s, each one having 4,000 rounds of a 7.62x51 M134 minigun on the side. Op 4, meanwhile, their loadouts are going to be Chechen forces, so AK-74s, GP-25 for their grenade launcher, SVDs for the marksman rifle, RPKs for the light machine gunners, RPG-7s for the light anti-tank, PKPs for the Delta medium machine gunners, uh, RPG-32 for the Echo Team medium anti-tank weapon, and then PP-2000s for the uh, vehicle crews. They have a BTR-80 Alpha with AP ammunition. I also want to look. So, Blue 4 only gets 70 rounds of AP for their LAV. BTR gets 150. Uh, the regular 80 has both the KPVT and the uh, PKT. Otherwise, three scoped Elkins uh, with 200 round boxes for the 240. Three gas trucks, two dishkas, and then two standing cords and two sit-down cords, each with 250 rounds each. Uh, some weird little geyser effects going on. Smith is going to be commanding Blue 4, Depso leading Alpha with Lowski, Tendies, and Kremit. Under him, Alpha 1 has Kajonovich, Cheeseburger, and Samuel together. Alpha 2 has Lewis and Vagrant together. Bravo being led by Wheaton with Gazag and Hunt under him. Uh, Major Khan, Ash, Commander Pickles, and uh, Puttek are going to be Bravo 1. Bravo 2 has Banks and Tackleberry. Charlie has Norris leading with Whiteside and Hunt under him. Charlie 1 has Michael, Waldo, Harrington, uh, Harrington excuse me, and Dewitson. Echo, the medium anti-tank team is going to be Charlotte leading, Sam being the medium anti-tank gunner, and then Alexander being the assistant. So four rounds total for that medium anti-tank team. Lolo McMarine being the LAV-25 crew, Patriot and Zixme being one UH-60 crew, and then Arkin flying the other UH-60. Puma leading Op-4. Going to put my render distance up a little bit. Uh, we've got Pierce leading Alpha with Toms, Urvu, Bursty, Selwick, Nekomata, and Nolik under him. Bravo being led by Wiki Quartz with Thomas, Halazar, uh, Templar, and Maxic under him. Bravo 2 has Rambo, Bambo, Rocky 19, Nafs, and Slodiak under him. I always butcher his name. I'm just going to call him Slod for the rest of my life. Damn. Uh, Delta being led by Dobbs with Daedalus, Nemesis, Bance, Malin, and Dream under him. Echo, the medium anti-tank team, has Yanni leading with Iander. AT Legend himself uh, being the gunner with Colts and Cats, so they're going to have six rockets total. And then the BTR-80 Alpha is going to be crewed by Rodrig, Fawns, and T. Otherwise, looking at the AOs, uh, this appears to be a fight for meteorites that are all these little black spots right here uh, that have randomly crash-landed. Otherwise, looking at some of these additional buildings here, we've got a little bit of a blown-out tower as well as a meteor landing in this zone. It looks like they uh, deformed part of the map out to make this area out quite interesting because, yeah, there's supposed to be some additional stuff right here, but it's been uh, taken away. Very nice. We have a nice little underground portion right here as well for the cache search zone under Destroy 2. So that's quite nice. And it's all been completely blacked out. It's meant to be for a vehicle to come in as well. They're using the Tanoan airstrip platforms to make this area. And I got to wonder what the barbed wire here is for. Because I don't think they can actually go up there. So, huh. I guess to help keep the floor. Actually, from a tactical standpoint, don't know why that exists. But regardless... Op 4 starting off in the middle of the zone, and then all of the destroy objectives mark where the ZU-23s are, and again, those are most, uh, those are only allowed to be used against aircraft, so, a lot of that around, and then I'm looking for the terminal site. Okay, it's over here. That's just part of the military complex in the back. And that is our AO. So very hilly on the outskirts. We've got some nice little hills and even mountainous terrain on the sides. So Blue Fork can come in and try to use that as Overwatch. Hopefully they won't fall for the Overwatch fallacy. But that's just a lot of objectives 
that blue four has to do. Uh, granted, a lot of them can probably be sniped by the LAV-25 if it gets up on one of these high areas. It could just, you know, two or three tap the ZU-23s with its AP and take it out, but beyond that, that's really all we got. Yeah, the Blue 4 just has a bunch of random aircraft carriers. I wonder if Op 4 doesn't know where Blue 4 spawn is, and that's why we have... Is this one in the sky, or is it underground? Because there's also a fourth one out here. That one's spawned in, so why is the other one hidden? Hmm. Because I would expect maybe Blue 4 has the ability to, like, transport to those ones instead. But, no, that's that's what we got. Mm. A lot of statics to work with, though. You see that? I think they're trying to load some of them in the truck so they can move them around. But that's a lot of defensive firepower. trying to listen in on them, but sometimes when units are over water, you can't hear them locally from the spectator interface, and I suspect that's what we're uh, not able to hear right now. But Blue 4 tracking the road they need to follow to get into the zone. Definitely very hilly, so they're going to be slow in some parts, fast in others, but that'll eventually take them all the way into the AO. I'm going to be curious to see if they load anyone up into helicopters and bring them in from the outskirts, but... Yeah, that's still quite a drive to get them into the zone over here. Whew, I'm getting hit with a wave of fatigue, so I will try my best to power through this. You know, they could use the cords or dishkas as AA, but since they already have a bunch of ZU-23s, I don't really see them using it that way, unless it's an absolute last resort. But, you know, at the same time, the 23s are just going to be more so deterrence. So that the helicopter doesn't immediately like fly in and try to land in the city because it'll be get shot down by point defense. So, you know, maybe if Blue 4 drives out and, or excuse me, Op 4 uh, drives out and sets up defensive zones and then they find a helicopter coming in and Op 4 just happens to have a, you know, a static, they could definitely pull that out and shoot the chopper down. But otherwise, we'll probably just see it as uh, internal security for the AO. Yeah. Either push out there or there or like then fucking yeah, out no, there. But, but the plan is, uh, he said no. And she's gonna have to run back if we get shot at. I mean, up there is just a but fucking Gotta be sure. Sure. So you hear that Scandi wants to push out more and they're being told no. They got a BTR coming up to join them. It's a regular 80. But their orders are to then pull back into the town to hold urban CQC. You know, Cater, it's not really about zones. It's more so just a bunch of destroy objectives. The real two objectives that need to be held is a cache and the terminal out here. The terminal's kind of in the open, but this is a bit of a peninsula that can easily be hunkered down by multiple military buildings. I'll be overwatching this area, and it's a big open area to get up to it. So this can be really defendable if the squad realizes where the kill zones are and holds them, whereas this one's just going to be a nightmare of CQC. So I imagine Op4 is probably going to fold into both because both, I mean, that one only needs like a single squad to hold it. And then here you just need a squad or two with the vehicle assets to hold it above. So I think Delta is being ordered to then hold that area as they fold in. And then everyone else is just going to focus on the other AO, but we might still see forces push out. Just the fear of when you push units out is if they don't come back in time, then you get steamrolled at the objectives themselves. So it could be anything. Yeah, maybe you make it at an angle where you can actually get yeah, into it. I told Peter that if I come back to day before. And they sent you over here? Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Alright, thank you. you.
What one? The long one, the corner one, or the short one, do you reckon? I don't know. Try them. Figure out which, what you like. He's got five minutes to do so. We could split the squad. That, I'd recommend using the scroll wheel so that it's the other way around. Okay. Yeah, so they're trying to set this up as a defensive corner. But it's going to quickly... They're going to quickly get folded back if Blue Force sends their full force from the south. Yeah, you, you can use scroll wheel to, like, turn it around when you have it out. <laughs> All right. Would that be a good position to shoot from? I mean, if your enemy's over there, but what if they're to your left? From that location? It's motherfucking gaming time. Giving another way. Might as well not use any of that. What's up, guys? I am a gamer. Jesus Christ. Alright, let's see how Blue Force mounted themselves up. We've got vehicles on a transport here. They're going to be taking both 113s, all three of the 1240s, and the LAV with one transport truck. And the helicopters, one is loaded with some infantry, and the other is going to be done as a single unit scout. I'd imagine if the other one runs out of ammo, it'll land and pick people up, and then they'll use those guns as well. Green 4, meanwhile, they're messing around. They've left a wheel behind, but they've got a big chunk of forces that'll go out. We have the 80 Alpha that's going to drive north, so this also indicates to me that they don't know where Blue Force coming from. They don't know where Blue Force spawn zone is. They're going to assume it's been up here, and they're going to go for a quick fight. So that might give Blue Force enough time to flank around on the um, you know southern approach, but again, it's just going to be a slow push in. I think the main fighting is really just going to be in the uh, we'll internal the AOs instead. Be high rise. We need to fill in. I am gamer. I love gaming. Dream is just so out of it down there. The poor sod. I don't know what 88 means. 88? Yeah. No, I don't know what it means. It's like a German number for Hill Hitler. Okay, never mind. Don't you love listening to random players and their wonderful conversations? I sure as hell don't. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I can't win. Honestly, I think Blue Force's biggest problem, though, is going to be having way too many people that end up on Overwatch and not enough people pushing in. That's what I predict is going to happen. Meanwhile, Op 4, I think, are going to push too many forces on the outskirts, and then Blue Force is going to push right in. And you could see uh, the defenders completely cut out from the AO itself. Hey, Razor, fun fact. Uh, till the 24-hour stream, you have... Uh, you have the time off. I gotta get with my schedule and then see between you and Ghost Wolf when I can still do stuff over the next three weeks. Because my Fridays are all taken, so. For three weeks, y'all are free. Alright, safe zones dropped. Hey, Zolan, how you doing? See where the helicopters go. Yeah, I feel that. That was. Oh, they still hit each other. Well, that was the potential to make a really fun armor moment. Quick, you have to gamble. Oh, man, I can't 
keep yawning. So the BTR is also pushed out to take a few guys to this neighboring hilltop. So, yeah, no, they're just going to branch out and see where they can find the enemy. And you have Blue Form moving around the center, Echo moving up. They're going to be a medium anti-tank team, so they're just going to be hunting for vehicles. If they can position themselves and happen to stumble along the entire vehicle convoy, they're going to be golden. Helicopter looks like it's descending to potentially land somewhere here. Echo now setting up over here to check out that chopper, but it's already buggered off. AD Alpha coming out here. They're going to see that there's a massive lack of uh, aircraft carrier. Direct north. I can't see anything northwest. Yeah, so I don't know what they're doing, man. All the way out here to cover this specific area? Like, maybe if a helicopter lands? Like, there's no... I don't see the tactical advantage of having the AD Alpha this far. Especially with the gun focusing north. That one, I... I don't understand where Puma's going with that one, personally. Otherwise, let's look at Blue Force Convoy coming in. They're going to be taking the direct route. And it looks like one of the MRAPs got cooked. Probably in an Arma incident, but it looks like everyone's okay otherwise. So they're down an MRAP. They loaded all the people into the other two. Don't know what happened there. I gotta wonder if they're gonna call in for Echo. I mean, cause these guys hear the vehicles coming, probably we'll start seeing them in a moment. BTR-80 with that 14.5 can definitely pen into some of these vehicles as well. Mm, Echo now being ordered to pull off, probably to go focus on the vehicles instead. Will they move on foot though, or will they grab the vehicle? Cause if they go on foot, it's gonna be a while. is opening fire, dodging bullets here. And he gets knocked by a lot of assets in a lot of different sections. Okay, and there he goes. 80s moved up, but the LAV is close by. Yeah, poor Nem. Aerial cartwheel. So... Echo for Op4 is now being routed south. I'm waiting to see if the BTR-80 Alpha is going to be pushed as well. Again, I'm really worried that Op4 could be defeated in detail here because they're way too spread out. No idea when they're the BTR here. Yeah, Nemesis. Hello. Nemesis. Hey. You did an aerial cartwheel. Nice. Oh. I guess Yanni's mom was not with you for that one, Chief. <laughs> no. Damn, what a shame. Anyway, good luck. I gotta mute myself before I hear something else crazy. Oh my god, and Delta almost blows up. <laughs> one oh, second. Cool there. Okay. Woo. Because my plugin's borked, so now when I uh, when people die, I do hear them locally again. Oh well. AT fired. That was Echo. Hold on. 
with a 1,062 meter shot on the LAV. Yep. That's Iander for you. Now, that's with an RPG-32, which only has a scope that goes up to 500 meters. Iander's told me, though, he prefers utilizing the RPG-32 over the Moz because when you start overranging it past the 500 meter mark, it's going to be accurate 100% of the time compared to the Moz that has a slight... Um, God, what's the word? It's not accurately ranged past 500 meters, so you can follow the mill dots it puts down, but it's not always going to hit where the mill dots say. Compared to the RPG-32, where if you just, you know, measure the lines down, you'll still get the hit. So he's got room to make some pretty hefty AT shots here as well. But that vehicle cooking off, the fuel's cooking off, they're not gonna be able to do much. Lolo pats the fire off of Mac. Funny enough, that's also right next to where the uh, MRAP got uh, knocked by, I guess, Arma. Now you got some suppressive fire coming out here. Kachanovich gets hit a few times. Suppressive fire coming up on Echo as well. Charlie one, meanwhile, pushing to potentially flank him. Iander has the AT out. He's revving the go again. But with the LAV knocked out early, I'm not sure there's much else they're going to be able to do. I think they're attempting some repairs. But if her fuel's been flamed out, she's not going to be able to go anywhere. It's still cooking off, so they might be able to attempt to re uh, repair in the fuel before it fully cooks off, but we'll have to see. But yeah, everything pushed off of that hill is immediately going on the ridge. Looking at the map's macro here, AD Alpha is folded back. Could get in a position to save Echo from Op 4 from getting taken out. And then you still have this Op 4 team up here. They're taking some long range fire. But they've also set up, uh, oh, a scoped 240. Trying to click Maxic so I can view him. There we go. Look at him just suppress the hillside. So that's what was hitting uh, Kajonovic earlier. But let's see, the range of that asset is about a little over a click out. But Pickles gets knocked out. Those scope turrets are a real game changer. I think the vehicle cooked off and killed them both. Oh my god, it did. Heard another AT launch. It hits over here. That was more than likely Iander hitting another Vic at 633. We do see an RPG in the tube. So now Blue 4 is down their LAV and down an MRAP. Well, technically down two MRAPs now, so only one MRAP remaining. And I think the 113 has got abandoned because the 240 is not going to really do you much since it's not scoped. So Blue 4 now residing mostly as infantry. Penguin called it. Yes, he did. <laughs> so AD Alpha now retreating. It's going to instead get on this hill and provide additional overwatch from Blue 4 pushing in on this zone. Where is Blue 4 Echo? It's back here. And meanwhile, hotels flying around in the back with their uh, helicopters. There's not much they can do because of those ZU-23s in play. Another RPG comes out. And it hits that MRAP. Now all three MRAPs are disabled. Looks like they were decrewed already. But now Blue 4 has no vehicle support other than air. But Op 4 have ZU-23s around the defensive zone. So... Those are effectively useless. These guys taking some fire from Charlie One trying to push them. So a lot of smoke grenades going out and they are repositioning. We got the 80 up here trying to provide close security. 80 Alpha getting in position on the hillside. But still not in an effective position to overwatch the entire AO yet. So Op 4's Echo team was a group of three. They're three for three right now, so they still have three rockets remaining. They can use that either on individual infantry members or anything that uh, Blue 4 might try to repair and push in with. 
But now Blue 4 don't really have a way to rush into the zone if they need to. And are kind of SOL. Meanwhile, Grenadier Round's going on top of the fortifications here, landing just a little bit short. But we see that these guys are being ordered to load in the BTR and push back into the zone. Cat's taking fire from multiple angles here. And he gets immediately blown up by a GL. Ouch. BTR-80, now uh, the 80 Alpha firing from above. And you have the Scope 240 now shooting down as well. But they can't seem to line up the shots. You saw the UH-60s coming in. They're trying to see if they take fire if they come in. MG suppressing. We got the UH-60 now firing, but that auto cannon could turn. I'm gonna be honest, between the firepower we have down here, it's triple A, it can still take out the helicopter. Especially if the auto cannon lines up some shots. So I think the helicopter is gonna stay out of, uh, out of range here. But it might try to stabilize itself so the uh, minigunner can start spraying. But look at that, they're getting some knockouts on people moving by. Here comes the minigun fire. They can't hear the fire over their own fire, though. Now with that little lull, they can hear it. They're scattering. It's still a minigun. <laughs> so the fire rate's pretty high. And it's going to turn off before it flies too close to any of the defensive 23s. I don't think Blue Force realized that Op4 doesn't have anything on them. But at the same time, they haven't really been able to get eyes over... But look at this. Now you're seeing Blue Force starting to trickle in. They're going to start uh, getting on top of these other positions. So Op4 is just focusing on setting up a final defensive line back here. True, making them scatter does stop them from firing. I'm waiting to tell, uh, see when they order that 80. But here you go. One of you predicted that they would take the cords out and start using them if the Chocobar got close. Rounds are landing close, but none are landing direct. But that I think that's only Arcane flying that helicopter, so no gunners on that one. That's just there to basically absorb fire. 80 Alpha is finally being ordered to maneuver, so it's going to get on the hill and try to engage. The shots were landing just short. Marksman shots coming up here. They decrew the turret from the little house building there. Seeing Op4 firing on their own guys. Echo is under threat. But Blue 4, that's 10 Ds, I think, with the Marksman rifle. Yep, ACOG on that Mark 11. But yeah, now with the auto cannon being repositioned to be on this hill, helicopters, if they get too close, are going to get triple eight out of the sky. Wow, look at that, a machine gun knocking out Kabubi. That is Alpha 1 down there. Literally just Pierce with a Dishka. Keyholing through a window. Nice. Echo still trying to run, BTR. 80 Alpha is now firing. Shots are still landing short. One, two hits. So he's forced to dive. I'm surprised those didn't immediately tap the chopper. Templar knocked out up here, probably took marksman fire. AT comes in from Echo, hits the 80 Alpha and disables it. That was a 734 meter shot. Another shot coming in, I heard it in the distance. No, that was the helicopter exploding. 
It took auto cannon fire. I think they were forced to land, and the chopper lost control, and they got destroyed. So the auto cannon still got the kill. And that is the air support for Blue Four down, because Arcane is only flying that one. He doesn't have any gunners, so he'll have to land to pick one up. But Blue Four is essentially assetless. We do have a 113 coming up on the rear, though, with that 240, but 240's not going to be able to do much. And infantry are starting to fold in, but they have a lot of objectives to work with here. I don't have a timer on my right side. Okay, so we have to play it by ear. Only 15 minutes have gone in, so there's still 35 minutes left on the round. Blue 4 has a lot of time to start assaulting these individual positions, but it's going to be a slow game. Fonz gets knocked off of the scope turret. We have a medic up here with an SVD. Or that might just be because of the uh, the pouch he has. But he can't seem to line up shots with that SVD at this range. Yeah, they all have that little IFAC pouch. That's why it's tied to the vest. And the AD Alpha cooks off. Long range fire going in on... I don't know what. Maybe they think there's somebody up on this EU-23. Otherwise, infantry are now starting to slowly breach. Op 4 is reconsolidated on the final terminal position back there. As well as command is sticking close to his EU-23 in case air comes in. Tendi's trying to get some marksman hits on the hilltop with his ACOG. Funny thing is, this is ranged for a 5.56, not a 7.62 platform, so he's going to be inaccurate on the get-go. I'm just wondering when we're going to see this Op 4 force pull back. And then we have Delta moving up on the outskirts as well. Remember when I said earlier that Blue 4 might still win because Op 4 might have too many forces on the outskirts on actually playing defensive security? We could still see that. Look at the amount of blue four now getting into the zone. They're going to go into the destroy objective. They're going to take these two turrets out, loop in. And there's just so much op four on the outskirts. I mean, there's only, there's less than a dozen guys in the zone. That's including the forces coming in. That's, yeah, 12 total. And blue four, I mean, they're going to have double that in a bit as the rest of their forces trickle in. So half of op four's infantry, even more than half, are out here instead. But these guys, they're running out of an opportunity to haul ass because Blue Four is getting closer and could end up in positions to prevent Op Four from folding in. So, cash is destroyed. They thermited it. Nice. Now they're just going to get on the rooftops and take out these EU-23s. They're going to have to plant charges and debt them, though. They can't do a throwable. Or they could throw and destroy the building and then collapse it and then destroy it when it's on the ground. That might be a safer option. Now we're just seeing the maneuver. They're going to, I think, rush for the terminal. Get the destroy objectives there. They're leaving one guy here to potentially climb the tower. This team, I think, will move in and take that one position. We got one blue four guy that's really trickled around, white side. He's alone as a marksman. I think he was just told to run off and go hit things. So I think Op4 might still lose their own hubris, but we, start, we are starting to see infantry running off of this hill to go set up a defensive perimeter. I think the Maz Echo is now going to try to snipe some of those EU-23s with their AT. We saw a shot come in. I think that was them missing. And I think they only have one more. Nope, they've dropped it, so they've used all four. 
and they're just leaving it at that point because you would still keep it so you could snipe some of the turrets with it from afar but they only had one assistant with it and they used two on the btr and then we just saw one debt there and i don't know where the fourth round went so blue four they still need to blow up the guns because i'm pretty sure they're not optional But Op4, again, trying to pull everything they can to make a defense line here. We still have Delta kind of out and about. But Blue 4 still have a pretty solid chance of winning this. You got to remember, the ZUs can only be used against aircraft, though. That was one of the rules. Look at that, though. We got some... Uh, someone got back up on that 240 and is starting to hit some of the people that are in the open. He gets two kills with it. That's Max Sick up there again with three kills now. He's just double tapping bodies. But you can see based off of where the turret's lined up in his uh, scope right here, it's way up. Gets another knockout. And that symbol's still there. If you have something with the range and you put a scope on it, and you put it on a tripod so it has no uh, recoil. <laughs> that put in a pretty nice chunk out of Blue Force maneuvering infantry. Putok pushes back. He is not a medic, though. Oh, but Pickles is brought back up. Nice. That's funny. Who's winning? I'd say it's slightly in Op 4's uh, jurisdiction here because Blue 4 did just take a few nasty casualties there, but it's still it's still too early to call. A lot of Blue 4's armor in this round got knocked out early on. Uh, Blue 4's air power took a pretty significant hit. Oh yeah, that that's a satchel. That's gonna take it out. You got these guys now. They're gonna be forming a three-man defensive team. And they're, funny enough, engaging people with PP-2000 submachine guns. Basically modernized PPSHs at this range. Good God. So they're running out of that building. Blue Force still trying to advance, but they're running into a snag with Op Force defensive line. They've collapsed everything from the north, and they're trying to now set up a twin defensive line here. Cull is trying to counterattack. Doesn't spot him through the window. I think Tendi's trying to watch that window instead. Well, it's in a two to one. And he takes a GL by Cheeseburger. Knocking him out there. All right. That DU-23 is destroyed. So one cache and one ZU-23 have been destroyed. There's still three more ZUs to destroy and then the terminal. Before slowly pushing people up. Sam, I think he knows that there's movement in that building. Might have seen it through the windows. Well, let's see. 40 minus 15 would be 35. So there's... No, that's not right. That's 25. So there's still 25 minutes left on this round. Blue 4 have their foot in the door on the objectives here. And then we got a three-man Blue 4 team that could flank around on the northern side at the end. We got some grenades being thrown up to damage that 23. Helicopters flying around, testing the waters. Sam's going to prone in on that compound. Op4 sending more forces in to try to counterattack this Blue 4 line pushing. I think Op4 is going to be able to stop this Southern Blue 4 push because we have Blue 4 way too spaced out in various areas here. AT fired. I think it hit the building early, though, because we still see Blue 4 up in this spot. AT 
AT was just firing. I think it hit the 113. It's cooking. We see a man down back here. Another RPG goes in by Maxic. That is the RPG 7. Yep. But now Op 4 are pretty much pushing that blue 4 line, and it is starting to buckle. Meanwhile, Blue 4 breaching around the first ZU out here. Sam is trying to methodically breach around the building and take out who he can. A lot of the windows blown out, indicating a grenade was used recently. T, though, camping this little window. That submachine gun will be lethal at this range. Grenade randomly thrown out. Sticks on the rooftop. He's just trying to wait Sam out. RPG being fired again. I don't have an ear on where it hit, but I heard something cook off. That would be the 113. RPG goes in the back. At this point, it's just up to who's the better PvPer. But Blue 4, we have a massive gap on the rear. And look at Tendi's over here. He's swimming to the other side. And he might not be noticed. So if he actually gets on this ridge, he could flank Puma and immediately take him out with that Mark 11. Yanni unable to land the shot on Samuel, gets the final knockout. He gets knocked prone and taken out by Kabubi. Tom is now trying to push him with that SVD. Gets the kill. Can he double tap Samuel before he wakes up? Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> he still gets it. Oh, man. There was a slight desync spike there. Looks like Sam pushed around and got killed off on a breach. Yep. And the engine of the UH-60 is powering down. Arkin's going to move in on foot with that MP7 of his. 2v2 on the outskirts. We do have Delta now on the rear covering that objective. Blue 4, meanwhile, we got Tendi's moving around. He might, he's gonna find Bursty here. Mag dumps his back and lets him turn around and gets killed off. Depso ends up in a 1v1 with Puma. Grenade misses. Op 4 now spotting Depso and taking him out. Uru gets up, knocks Depso out. Will we see a double tap? Blue 4 have the numbers on the south, though. More Blue 4 have trickled in. I think they're going to potentially get these objectives up here, but this is the one they got a BTR-80 locking down that ZU-23. Depso gets double tapped. We have a lot of Blue 4 swimming around to try to open up a new flank. Vagrant, meanwhile, he hears Thomas moving around below him. Has Thomas switched weapons? No, he's sticking with that SVD. With the PSO scope on for CQC, mind you. Interesting call. Looks like he's trying to hone in on Vagrant. Vagrant, though, he hears those footsteps. Oh, he turns his head a little too late. Thomas goes to handgun and gets Vagrant as he goes outside. Wow. Tom are firing out at Alexander, who immediately wakes back up. Charlotte pushed in and got taken out. Roderick taking friendly fire from the ridge up here. Because they're just trying to prevent anyone, anyone from detonating the building. Tomer gets taken out by Alexander. And what do we got? We have four, five, six, seven, blue four to five, op four, with two more blue four coming in. We still have this group of three blue four up here as well. Op four might still lose. Because blue four, if they bully through the remaining now four defenders here, take all those objectives and double back. We still have those three additional guys for reinforcements and more guys trickling in from the south. Blue four might have the numbers to still beat out, but it's going to be close. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're actually going to have PvP where a BTR-80 without the auto cannon part matters. Usually BTRs are a piece of shit. <laughs> But this might be the single most important BTR I've ever seen in a PvP match. And I'm not sure Blue 4 has any AT. We do see Pickles over here. He might still have his AT4. Yep, so it's going to rely on an AT4 hit to take that out. Yeah, the squeaking turret. So 
So now it's a matter of can any remaining op four down here hold? Might be up to players like Navs to get multi kills with those GLs. He is switching grenades here because he saw Kazog briefly. We have 20 minutes left on the round. Blue Four, meanwhile, driving in. Looks like they got caught on a fence here to stop the vehicle rush. So this could cause Op4 to collapse back on objectives. But do any of them? We do have Harrington with the demo. So we could go up and take out that ZU. Tom has still looking around. He's on four kills. He's switched to a stolen Mark 18. We have Iander dead over here with the... Uh, <laughs> The AT, only, not credited with any of those vehicle hits, though, because you have to kill the vehicle outright, which is what sucks about Ace. But, yeah, no, he knocked he knocked all of uh, Blue Force ground support out, with the exception of one, uh, 113 that came in, but someone else got that one. And two of those shots were over a kilometer away. Goddamn. Can Wiki hold... He's got a GL, but I think I saw smoke loaded in that GL. Yep. So he's out of uh, HE. Tom has pushes up and gets blown away by Major Cons. A follow on shots by Commander Pickles. Wikicorch trying to hit uh, Pickles there, but unable to line up that shot. And Blue Force still trickling in on the north. Alnaraz getting pinned in this building, trying to find an angle on any blue four to take out before he gets taken out himself. More shots going around Nafs' position. Again, I think these three objectives are lost. It's this objective that's going to be the main one, and you still have an occasional blue four guy trickling in on it. But we could still see one of these off four defenders rack up some kills here. Here comes Pickles. And there goes Pickles. Grenade thrown up on that building. Grenade going in. It bounces out the back wall. Helicourt's forced to push, not realizing that it went out the back window. And he is taken out. Alexander on two kills, part of Echo. Does he have any AT? He does not. Where's the explosive specialist? He's on his own. Harrington going for the terminal. I don't agree with that call. He should have gone for the ZU-23. I think these guys could mag dump the ZU-23 and eventually destroy it. It's going to take a good chunk of their ammo, though. Uh, Rome, it's uh, schedule, not calendar. <laughs> What a slow round and a surprising change of events. And I think that's because Op4 had way too many people outside the AO. And the defenders did what they could, but they fought a much more numerically superior force. Because a lot of the defenders were out of the zone. Harrington going to get the terminal because there's no. People are on towers trying to hold kill zones instead of playing site security. I don't see any explosives on or around this site. I think he's good. And there's the hack. Mercy just took a hit. So Harrington is going to now just play top security here. He's going to have to go then to destroy six and destroy four. These blue four need to trickle on to destroy one. There's the 15-minute call for the game. Blue four needs to work fast because they can still lose to, a uh, to the time at this point. BTR just fired. 
I don't see Bursty or Wiki leaving their towers to go stop the hack, especially with 30 seconds remaining. I think they're just going to uh, chill there. GL's by Waldo going in. His battle buddy got taken out, I think, by Bursty. Yep, he's up to two kills now. It's a long grenade throw to smoke. I think they're trying to obscure the tower's uh, perspective there. Harrington's now going to leave because there's eight seconds left. He's going to go demo that ZU-23. There's the objective destroyed there. Malin now on the gun. Whoop! Oh, that camera was facing me. Whoops! Ignore that. That was a hotkey. So I was just trying to show the uh, scope zoomed in there. Daedal is doing some suppression here. Wow. All right. Damn. Hurtful. Very hurtful, Charlotte. <laughs> Harrington got taken out somewhere. Yeah, no, he tried pushing the tower. I don't know why you would do that. You're the explosive specialist. You have to go for the objectives. I, I think this is over. Because Blue 4 doesn't have a way to push all three of these objectives. It was up to Harrington as the last explosive specialist to <clears throat> take out, destroy objective 4 and uh, objective 6. But instead he went aggressive on his own and it, that cost him the game. Everyone else in Blue 4 and then needed to push 1. There's no coordination left. This is going to be GG to opt for because they still have three of the objectives in play. They're instead Blue 4 just focusing on kills. Not realizing that Op 4 still have a big chunk of forces around the original, the first uh, ZU. There was coordination at the start. Ha! Yeah. AT going up on Bursty's position. I mean, that's good that they're making Blue 4 drain all the AT because it means they're not going to have any to destroy the BTR. Bursty responding with some AT of his own with the RPG 7. It's over. Arcane trying to avoid that BTR. Funny how he survived. He actually found a 249 on his way up. More AT going on Bursty's tower. You can see that they're not even going for the destroy objectives. I mean, you saw three people bypass this one. Waldo's not even going for destroy six. I don't really see what the hell Blue Four is doing. It seems they're only honing in on gunfire. But uh, so this will be the last round I cover because I'm I'm out of time. Both of these rounds went to the maximum amount of time. I'm. And again, Waldo's going for the kills instead of the objective. Auto gets the kill. Double taps with the handgun. Ah, uh, ten minutes remaining. Find it funny that Op4 only has one guy holding the cat, uh, the 
objective zone. But even then, it, it doesn't really matter because Blue Force is not playing the objectives. Otherwise, we'd be seeing some moving going towards the objectives themselves. I, it's frustrating. Going on vacay? No, we're just taking the night off. Bloodwing and I are going to go see an opera and eat charcuterie. Next week is going to be a vacation, but I'm going to make sure I do a shit ton of streaming beforehand to leave you guys with plenty of content. They're not marked? <laughs> Why aren't they marked? What? Yeah, no, all right, I'm done. I'm done. There, There's no way Blue Four is going to win. Because Blue Four doesn't even know where the ZU-23s are. And the last guy... To, uh, all right, I'm calling it. GG, Op4 win. Because... Uh, thank you so much for watching. Go operate operationally. Enjoy the rest of your day or night. Cheers. Have a good one.